Assalamu alaikum, my dear students. Hope you are all well by the grace of Almighty Allah. I am Shandi Dharman, assistant teacher of science, National Ideal English Version School. Today I am going to take a class for the students of class 6 and our today's class is science class. Now let's start our class. Our topic is chapter 2, reading learn, lesson 4 to 10, our lecture number 6 and homework number 6. Term half yearly. My name is Shantita Rahma and this is my content. Now we start go to the our lecture. <coughs> In lesson 4 to 6 flowering plants and the chapter this chapter name is living organism chapter 2 from your book and now we discuss lesson 4 to 6 flowering plants. You know plants are mainly two types one is flowering plants and other is non-flowering plants. The plants which bear flowers they are called flowering plants. <coughs> flowers are born in flowering plants, mango, jackfruit, shapla, china rose etc. Their body can be divided into root, stem and leaves. Some of these plants can produce fruits while some cannot. Therefore, the seeds of such plants are necked. These plants are again of two types, neck seeds plants and closed seeds plants. In the neck seeds plants, <coughs> their seeds is opened, not covered with the fruit or other things. And closed seeds plants, uh, when in, the, in case of closed seeds plants, their seeds are covered with fruits or leaves or other things. They have advanced conducting tissue within their body. Now you have a question in your mind that what is conducting? Conducting means in uh, <coughs> transportation tissue. This is in uh, future classes you will study jalan and phloem tissue. They um, transport uh, food things and so, um, water from the stem to different parts of the plants. That's why they are called conducting tissue. These are usually timber yielding plants. Now you this word is very unknown to you timber yielding. Timber yielding means the plants which have using for wood like mango uh, tree or jackfruit tree or blackberry tree like this. <coughs> Next seed plants gymnosperm. These plants born flowers but develop no fruits. The flowers of such plant do not have ovary so their ovals remain naked. These ovals ultimately transform into seeds. <coughs> Examples pine, cycas, arocaria etc. Lesson 7 you see here gymnosperm next seed plant it is the next seed plant and seeds this is the seeds of a next seeds plant now we go lesson 7 angiosperm plants angiosperm plants mango blackberry palm and most of the green plants around us are closed seed flower green plants these plants have ovary the ovals are arranged with the ovary <coughs> after fertilization the ovals turn into seed and the ovaries develop into fruits for this reason the seed of such plants are found hidden within the fruits and this is the picture of a angiosperm plants you see that mango seeds is uh, inside of the mango and jackfruit seeds is inside of the jackfruit. They are called angiosperm plant because their seeds are inside of the fruit. Their seeds are not opened and after uh, fertilization <coughs> their ovals turn into seeds and ovaries develop into fruits. Now go lesson number 8. Characteristic of invertebrate and vertebrates. You know that we differentiated animals into two groups 
one is invertebrate and another is vertebrates <coughs> in case of invertebrate animals there is no vertebrate skeleton sorry that's, there is no skeleton that's why they are called invertebrate animals and in vertebrate animals they have a skeleton that's why they are called vertebrate animals <coughs> let's we discuss take a whole <coughs> well cooked fish take out the flesh of the fish gently so that the bone remains intact <coughs> now observe the fish bone the hard long bone running from neck to tail is known as the vertebral vertebral column now try to feel the middle of your back can you feel the long hard bone running from your neck to the area close to your waist this is what we call vertebral column in our back side when we touch our <coughs> back side there is found one <coughs> bones long bones from our neck to waist and it is called vertebral uh, bone <coughs> and they are called vertebral columns depending on the presence of vertebral columns the animal's kingdom is divided into two groups in vertebrate animals and vertebrate animals fish frog birds well lizards cattle humans etc have vertebral columns they have vertebral bones since these animals have vertebral column they are called vertebrates those animal who have vertebrates they are called vertebrates on the other hand mosquito flies butterflies shrimps crabs earthworms etc are in vertebrates which means these animals do not have any vertebral columns they don't have any vertebral column <coughs> now put the animal from the following list into two groups invertebrate and vertebrate cockroach fish chicken dog frog wall lizard earthworm mosquito cow butterfly snake starfish now let us know about some animals that are often seen around our house and school campus we have to uh, differentiate it which is vertebrate and which is invertebrate after seeing the observing the animals <coughs> now lesson number 9 characteristics of invertebrates and vertebrates by now you have learned from how to classify plants depending on their certain characteristics like plants animals can also be classified on the basis of their characteristics we know that animals can be divided into two broad categories invertebrates and vertebrates some of the characteristic of invertebrates are invertebrates do not have vertical vertebral columns these animals do not have any skeleton they don't have any skeleton their eyes are simple sometimes they have many small eyes gathered together into one eye which is a compound eye in case of flies you will say compound eyes they do not have tails invertebrate can be of different kinds many of them are so tiny in size that they cannot be seen with bare eyes amoeba is an example of such animal amoeba is one kind of invertebrate animals we cannot see it in our naked eyes and it is no vertebral columns and earthworm and leech belongs to another group of animals their bodies are divided into many segments snail and waster fall into yet another group snail you know about this and uh, waster it is another kind of any um, animals and they are in another group their bodies are not segmented and usually covered with hard shells their body are covered with hard shells they have muscular fruit foot butterfly mosquito fly cockroach white ant bee etc are insects in the animal kingdom this kind of animals are the larger in number in our world insects are large in number lots of animals insects around us <coughs> their body is divided into three parts head thorax 
and abdomen they have joint foot and compound eyes now you know what is compound eyes compound eyes means when um, sometimes they have many eyes gathered together into one eye which is called compound eyes it is called compound eyes some of these insects are useful they are called useful insects like bee silkworm etc from the bee we get honey from the silkworm we get silk cloth <coughs> on the contrary mosquito and fly spread various diseases among us some other insects such as white ant landa insect rice spider etc cause damages to our houses furniture and crops there are some marine animals whose integument is spiny integument means outer part or outer cover of their body this is spiny starfish and sea urchins belong to this group you see when you go to the coccyx bacteria you will see starfish their body is covered with spine and <coughs> their outer space is spiny jellyfish and corals are different types of invertebrates they have a body cavity cylinder they have a single opening which is used for both intaking food and expelling of waste the vertebrates also have some <coughs> distinguishing characteristic as the invertebrates have the main characteristic of vertebrates are they have vertebral columns <coughs> skeleton within the bodies they have wings or two pairs of appendages their eyes are simple what is appendages appendages means two body part like uh, leg or hand this kind of appendages their eyes are simple except humans all other vertebrates have tails only the human who have no tail others vertebrates have the tail they respire by gills and lungs in human they respire by lungs vertebrates can be divided into two many classes on the basis on their diverse characteristic all fishes belong to group named pisces all fishes are in pisces group they live in water most of them have scales example hill shark koi koi etc they are very well known fish to you i think and <coughs> their body is covered with skin <coughs> examples however some of them have no skills for example magu shing kangra bull etc wal etc they use gills for respiration they also have fins which they use to swim fish use these fins for swim frogs are amphibian this is amphibian they spend some parts of their life in water and some on the land when they are <coughs> baby or they are kids then they live in the water and when they are big or <coughs> normal then they live in the land also they do not have any hair scales or feather on their integuments they have two pair of legs they have two pair of legs there is no nail on their phalanges there is no legs on their phalanges at the primary stage of their life cycle the tadpole uh, respire by gill and at the adult stage they respire by lungs and in the adult stage they also live on the land while lizard crocodile snake salamander etc are the reptiles these animals move by putting their weight on trunk <coughs> they have claws on their toes lay eggs and hatch them to give birth to the young ones they respire through lungs they also respire by lungs now <coughs> duck chicken pigeon dowel etc fall under the class of avis they are bird so they are in the class of avis 
their body is covered by feathers their body is covered by feathers but their body is covered with scale and amphibians body is not covered with scale or feathers or other things <laughs> having feathers in the main identifying features of birds except birds no other animals have feathers other animals have no feather without bark most of the birds can fly orchid or cheese penguin and some other birds cannot fly birds lay eggs they hatch eggs to give birth to the babies monkey rat dog cat goat etc are mammals humans also fall into this class of animals mammals have hair on their body feed mother's milk to their babies and the female give birth to the babies mammals are more intelligent than fish frog snake and bird their brains and bodies are well developed and mammals brain and body is well developed and humans are in class of mammal now in this class we will discuss different kinds of plants like flowering plants non flowering plants and and um, angiosperm plants next seed plants and um, covered seed plants and we also discussed different kinds of animals uh, one is um, different kinds of animals like fish amphibians reptiles avis and mammals so living organisms are divided into various groups so in this class we discuss about this my dear students i hope you understand our today's class and you will study this uh, lesson properly and your homework is find out mcq from this part homework number 6 5 mcq from this part dear students to uh, it's our today's class and hope you will stay fine with your parents goodbye and assalamu alaikum